Selfish faith. I used to believe deeply that the world was messed up and needed fixing. But as I learned and read and grew, I recognized that nobody is in possession of the blueprint. No human can decide what fixed looks like. Hitler had a vision of utopia. So did the pharaohs. So did every tyrant. I'm sure their committee meetings were filled with congratulatory back patting. How are we to know that our master plan is righteous? We can't. I let go of the idea that the external world is something that I can fix, or that I could even have the perspective to know what fixing looked like. Instead, I turned inward. I embraced faith. Not faith in a higher power, but faith that my only battleground is my own mind and heart. Faith that if I heal my mind and embrace love, then I will affect the world as I am meant to do. This can appear quite selfish, and it feels selfish often too, but I had faith. If I follow my heart and pursue love, then I am playing my part in the master plan. The destination is not my responsibility. I am but one cell in a massive organism, and my role is to discover my true self and walk my walk. A white blood cell does not need to know that the body is climbing a mountain. It only needs to know that the foreign microbe in front of it needs to be dealt with. Each cell need only to stay pure and walk its walk. In fact, to become more ambitious than this, or be believe that they know the master plan, is the very definition of sickness. A cancerous cell forgets that it has a single role in a massive system and instead tries to enact its own selfish plan on the rest of the body. I'm sure that cancer believes it's heroic. And I'm sure every missionary believes that he is righteous. There is a wonderful quote at the beginning of the film Hero that says, In any war, there are heroes on both sides. That is because both sides, in fact all sides, are driven by external beliefs. Inner truth and our own individual paths are all we can know for certain. In a world swirling with judgment and accepted belief systems, this type of inward trust requires faith. So as I work to free myself of shame, I have faith. As I confront my own fears, I have faith. Faith that the person underneath all of my socialization is a perfect seed of the divine. Faith that when I can act from that pure self, I am acting as an agent of love. Faith that self-growth can be a more significant activism than any external act. Do I question my faith? Hell yes, I stumble daily. But with each week, I gain more confidence. With each chapter, I gather more evidence. Our life is our purpose. Our daily walk is our service. And everything we do can be infused with love. My recent involvement with the monthly Help the Homeless has been one of the strongest affirmations of my faith to date. Not because of the physical manifestation of any specific action, but because of the way the inspiration grew in me. I did not set out to do a good deed. I had a realization one day that helping people I love brought me deep in joy. This was transformative. Helping people was always something I did in an effort to be nice, to keep the balance between friends, to pull my weight. But as I studied and grew, learned and grew, I turned a corner. I think it had much to do with the awareness of connection. If we are all connected, then your joy brings me joy. If we are all one, then your gain is my gain. If I give to you, I am giving to me. There is nothing saintly about it. It is selfish pleasure. Not only that, but if you can derive pleasure from what happens to others, that means the entire world is an opportunity for joy. I'll say that again. The entire world is an opportunity for joy. Not because of what they can give me, but because of what I can give them. If I can raise them, I raise myself. This seems so abstract, but not after Valentine's Day 2010. Jason called from the Costco parking lot. I just bought a crap load of stuff for the homeless. Want to come with me and pass it out? It was not something I would have done myself. I had never visited Skid Row and had fear on several levels, but with the, recip the recent epiphanies about gifting and joy, this invitation seemed divinely inspired. We drove downtown in the Hugmobile and hoped for the best. It was chaotic. It was fast. It was amazing. When all the goodies had been given away, we both had huge smiles and couldn't wait to do it again. I'm 38, I was 38 years old and had never done anything like that. And to be honest, I don't think I was ready until then. Sure. I could have handed out a granola bars and fed bellies for the day, but it was the awareness of connection that made the experience so rewarding. This time I was not doing my duty or easing my guilt. I was acting selfishly, feeling pleasure at the increase in love and connection. My faith was rewarded. 
A month later, we did it again. More people joined us and donated. Let's see. Well, this this next weekend was the next first Saturday, and we did it again. Even more people participated. I wish I could take credit for some grand vision or master plan, but this rippling of goodness was not the result of anyone making things happen. There was no agenda or desired outcome. Everything was the result of people following their hearts and acting from a place of love. The outcome is always unknown, but my faith in this selfish path continues to grow. It says, editor's note, this seat has become firstsaturdays.org and continues to grow. That was uh, Selfish Faith from Love More, Fear Less. Available at lovemorefearless.com. Oh, the author is, um, I'm not sure what it says here. Oh, Halcyon. 